Welcome to the Obesity Matters Wellness Workshop, where we embark on an incredible journey towards better health and wellness together. Whether this is your first time or you've been with us since we started this program, we are grateful you are here. My name is Rachel. I am the Vice Chair of Obesity Matters and one of your hosts for this year-long program, along with my co-host, Jen. Today, we offer you a support session where we aim to continue the conversations from our past sessions and provide a space to share and support one another. Our theme for today is gratitude. On the theme of gratitude, I'd like to thank our sponsors and partners for making this workshop possible. And today, I'm happy to announce an, an exciting new partnership with HelloFresh. Just for this community, we've lined up an amazing giveaway to make your new year even more special. The big draw will be held on February 1st, where three lucky winners will receive one month free subscription to HelloFresh. That's a prize valued at over $800. Even if you don't want a free kit, you'll still be eligible for some valuable discounts. So keep an eye out for your Obesity Matters email and on social media for more details about this delicious offer. Thanks so much, Rachel. And it's so wonderful to see everybody today. And as Rachel mentioned, today's theme is gratitude. And we thought what a perfect way to kick off a brand new year, a brand new trip around the sun, and just talk about gratitude and, and what we are all grateful for. So we find it's helpful to actually provide a definition of gratitude. The definition of gratitude is the quality or feeling of being grateful or thankful. I think for me personally, the gratitude is really living in a space of abundance versus scarcity and really getting the perspective for myself to look at things as a glass half full rather than a glass half empty. And this has taken a lot of practice for me. This is not something that has come naturally. And I do believe that gratitude is, like many other things, a practice. And the more we practice exercises that support gratitude, the more we build that muscle memory, that muscle strength. So it's like riding a bike. You can learn how to ride a bike when you're a kid. Maybe you haven't ridden a bike for 20 years. And when you get on that bike again, it might be a little bit shaky. It might be a little bit rusty, but you still do have that muscle memory. And so that's one of the things that I've spent a lot of time over the last year in really focusing on my practice of gratitude. And so some things that I do to strengthen that practice is when I wake up in the morning, I pause and I think, what am I grateful for today? And that's how I try to start before I even get out of bed. It's just a thought in my mind. What am I grateful for today? It could be my home. It could be the, the sun in the sky. It could be another day. And I try to do the same thing when I go to bed at night. And another thing that I did, and this was something really helpful during COVID, and I started it with my family, and this is our gratitude jar. And so every single day we each wrote on a little piece of paper, what are we grateful for today? And we put it in the jar. And then over time, the jar fills up with little pieces of paper. So it again, just helps to reinforce that sense of abundance and look at all of the positive things that we have to be grateful for. Even if they're crumpled on little pieces of paper put in the jar, it was a really good practice for me. Eat a different biochemistry within your body. And when we think about emotions, we think about, you know, our mental health is very much tied to our emotions, our perceptions in life, everything that our lens that we view the world through has a lot to do with the emotions that we're experiencing, where are actually a biochemical, very real phenomenon in the body. And when we take a moment to focus on gratitude, it creates a real time effect that shifts the nervous system. And it allows the nervous system to come into our parasympathetic zone where all of our healing, all of our repair, it helps to stimulate our frontal cerebral cortex where we you know, become more community minded, we become more compassionate. And it really, gratitude sets a stage where we can kind of use our nervous system and our higher mental faculties at a much higher vibration based on the chemistry that it creates. As opposed to if our thought habits are Oh, I hate when this happens. Oh God, this again. Oh, the, you know, we get, you know, I mean, I'm sure we all go through things in the day and we don't want to do or aren't our top choice. But you know, when our mind gets focused in that, we have a different biochemical reaction. It creates a different response in our emotions. It creates a different response in our nervous system. And nerves that fire together, they wire together long-term. The more you fire a particular pattern, the easier it is to reproduce it in the nervous system. It becomes a habit like anything else. 
ourselves. And when our thought habits turn to gratitude, we find one of the most effective and powerful tools to actually help us learn in real time to repattern our nervous system to function better in our zones where healing and health and wellness and, and mental health all come together. And so it's one of those practices that not only allows us to appreciate life and what's good in life, but it also is a tool that we can use to help improve our own health and wellness as well. Breathwork is another one of these ways that has been clinically proven to bring us into the present moment, to take our focus off of maybe some other negative patterns or habits that are happening, and to recenter us into a zone where our nervous system can actually make real-time changes for the positive. And when we practice breath work, it really is a beautiful place to begin a gratitude practice from because it really brings our nervous system into the zone and the vibration and tone of what's happening on the inner world into a zone that really allows the gratitude practice to become natural, to become really authentic and enjoyable. So I am grateful to be here today to share this breathing practice with all of you. It's something that's made a world of difference in my life and in my own clinical practice has made a, a world of difference for so many people that I've worked with. And I've always found that the breath work is the key to improving wellness and health in the body across the board, no matter where you're starting. And uh, I love specifically breath work because it's an accessible practice. Okay. Everyone pretty much can practice breathing and make an exercise out of it. We're, you know, saying before, you know, if you are not paralyzed from the second vertebra down and you have conscious awareness, these are the only two requirements for a breath work practice. And it's accessible to all body types, all body shapes, all types of health conditions and injuries and across the board always has benefit and generally tends to invite more gratitude into our life and, and so our nervous system can benefit from it. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're gonna kind of learn them in sequence of, you know, the, the hardest ones and most important ones first. And generally speaking, the third one is the easiest one to do. And then we're gonna put it together into a little breathing exercise that you can practice anytime, anywhere, any point of the day. I always recommend to do this at least a few minutes a day. I know Jen said she does five minutes every morning or Priti said she does five to 10 minutes every morning of breathing. It's a great way to start the day because it'll really get you centered, ready for your gratitude practice and ready for wellness. So our first topic is going to be this top area, our vocal diaphragm. And for this one, it's quite simple to do is what we're doing is we're actually gonna close the the vocal diaphragm and stop the vocal cords from vibrating and we're going to be breathing through the same pinhole in your throat you would whisper through so if you think about just you know allow yourself to whisper the alphabet right and notice there's no vibration there's no sound there's no pitch but there's an airflow that's happening through the very back of your air passageway it's a pinhole that opens up right in the vocal cords themselves to allow whispered speech Essentially, this is what we're gonna be breathing through and to engage it properly, we would sit up straight anywhere you're seated, doesn't matter. And you just think a little bit like you're pulling your chin just a little bit down and in, you'll feel a slight restriction across your throat. I always like to say, if you really wanna know how to breathe through this, pretend you're Darth Vader and be like, Luke, I am your father. That's kind of the feeling, except maybe not quite as intense, but it's a restriction, right? We're blocking a little bit at the throat to slow the airflow. So give it a try a few times and what we should should feel and hear is an ocean sound and should create a slight sound to the breath because there's some pressure and it should slow the breathing down. We can't take a big gasp in or a big gasp out. All the air has to travel slowly through this tiny pathway as opposed to the entire windpipe. Now, as we practice that, that is happening the entire way through this breathing exercise on both the inhalation and the exhalation, tightening that little valve up at the throat and slowing the airflow to create ocean sound. Now, our second part we're going to focus focus on is down in the pelvic floor. This is the hardest one. So if you don't feel this right away, don't worry. These muscles will develop and awareness of them will develop over time. In yoga, we call this mula bandha. And very easily, you know, kind of put, it'd be like thinking about squeezing your anal sphincter and then sucking it up to your belly button. It's deep. It's not a crunch. It's not an outer abdominal work. It's a 
very deep sucking in and up anus to belly button type of idea. Now, if you're like, I have no idea if I'm doing that or not, that's normal. Don't worry, that's where we all start on this breathing exercise. The starting point is thinking, squeeze the anal sphincter and tighten the pelvic floor. And then over time, that feeling of sucking it up towards your belly button as the muscle tones will get easier and easier. The pelvic floor has to lift all your organs, right? So this is essentially like a bench press for the pelvic floor, right? Maybe we didn't bench press on our first try. Maybe we went to the gym for a few weeks first. So, you know, be patient with your pelvic floor. If you're squeezing the sphincter, you're starting the right muscles, the lift will happen. And in a correct breathing cycle, this is what we do on an exhalation. So each time we exhale, we tighten, we lift from the pelvic floor, and then directly into that, that's where our respiratory diaphragm makes a big action, right? Our respiratory diaphragm lengthens upwards to help bring the air out, right? And so is what we want to do is think that as we're exhaling, we're not just lifting the pelvic floor, but now we're sucking the belly button towards the spine and up into the rib cage. It's this huge feeling of deep lift to push all the air out of the lungs. So we're gonna put this all together. These are our three pieces. It's a lot to coordinate. So just take, take a moment just to sit quietly. Think about all of these to slow your breath at your throat. As you inhale, allow your air just to expand open. To fill your whole rib cage, your heart, your back, your sides, down into your belly. And then each time you exhale, we're still slowing it at the throat. We squeeze the anal sphincter. We start to lift it up towards the belly button. Belly button continues the lift by drawing in and up until every last drop of air has released out of the body. And then the next inhalation starts just to slow. We're not gasping it in. The air is controlled through that pinhole in the throat. Slow, steady expansion through the whole rib cage, abdomen and back. Each exhalation, Pelvic floor lifts, anus to belly button. Belly button swallows in and up as every last drop of air is released out of the body. And just continuing that flow. The throat is just maintaining equal pressure, smooth, very steady flow. I feel that you're not straining or forcing. It's an easy movement of the breath. Relax your jaw eyes, your shoulders. Just allow yourself to settle into a rhythm. It might feel easy, it might be challenging. There's no judgments here in this practice. Allow yourself just to meet yourself where you're at in your breath today. Invite curiosity into your mind. If it feels like it's a lot to coordinate, Seeing how grateful we are to have such a complex body that does so much for us every day. A simple act of breathing is magic in itself if we were to break down its whole anatomy. Just allowing that slow process of your ujjayi breath, a mindful inclusion of all three of your diaphragms. Just focusing on relaxing and being present with your own body. We take this breath 25,000 times every day. And when we do it mindfully, peacefully, and with a process, we now begin to direct our breath to not only integrate us as a whole holistic human being, but to connect us to the world, to share this one great source of air that travels through us all, brings us all life, connecting us together in a common humanity, knowing we're never alone. There's always support. There's always something to be grateful for in our life. Starting with our very first breath. For 25,000 daily repetitions. Support us through all experience. The goods, the bad, the ups, the downs. I'll invite you just to take this practice forward with you into your year to know every time you repeat it, every time you take that mindful breath of gratitude, invite the changes we want to manifest in our life. You're ready, allowing your breath to come back to its regular rhythm. Thank you so much for sharing that practice with me today.